Hey guys, I'm Stephanie Janaga with Janaga Group Home Sales. So super excited to have you online tonight. This is our very first Facebook Live event. So happy to have you here. So what I'm gonna be doing tonight is just kind of walking you through the home buyer process, just hitting some bullet points on it, and then we're gonna go into further detail later on with some other videos there. So just bear with us as we kind of scroll through here. And uh, feel free to pipe in with any questions that you have online. We'll actually be answering those live for you. So send in any questions that you have. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name's Stephanie. I've been in the business for over 12 years. And uh, I have a small team of agents that work with me. So we actually work with home buyers and home sellers throughout all of Southeast Michigan. Uh, so it really doesn't matter where our office is located at or where we live at. Uh, really, we can help handle home, buy, home buyer sales and seller sales pretty much anywhere throughout Michigan uh, and outside of the state as well. So just to kind of get us started a little bit here. So when we work with you on the buying end, there's three roles that we have for you. And I don't know if you can see the screen, but if you can't, we'll walk you through it. So the three roles that we play for you is one is we are your consultant, we're your negotiator, and we oversee all the transactional details for you. So as your consultant, we're gonna be here to guide you through the process, answer your questions. You know, we've been through this before. I've been doing this for 12 years, so I've seen a lot of things happen. So my goal is to try to kind of see these things before they happen for you and circumvent any of those issues from happening. So I wanna guide you through the process and make it as smooth as possible. So number two is I'm your negotiator. I'm here to save you money. So I'm a pit bull when it comes time to saving you money. So I'm gonna treat your money like it's mine. Every single penny on the table counts. And number three is we oversee all the transactional details. So as you get into this process, you're gonna realize that there's a lot of people getting into the, getting into the, getting into the process. We've got a seller, we've got a buyer, we've got a mortgage broker, we've got a title company, we've got home inspection companies, you name it, we've got a lot of people kind of getting into the mix and that's where it can get a little chaotic. So we're here just to make sure that everything is happening according to the plan and the contract and that all of our I's are dotted, all of our T's are crossed, and that this is gonna be a smooth process for you. So you'll see this slide here that says 88 types of turbulence. And in all actuality, there's a whole heck of a lot more things that could happen. So the 88 types of turbulence, what that means is basically, I'm sure you've been on an airplane, you know, we all go on these airplane rides and we want to have a smooth plane ride. Nobody wants turbulence, but you know what? Sometimes it happens. So same thing with a real estate transaction. We want a nice smooth process and sometimes there's turbulence. So, you know, when that happens and you're on the airplane, the pilot doesn't get on and say, oh my God, you know, pack your bags. We're jumping out the, you know, out of the plane. They hop on the speaker and they say, hey folks, we're hitting a little bit of turbulence. Don't worry, sit back, we're gonna maneuver around it, we'll get you landed safely. So that's the same thing that we do here in the transaction for you. I know you can't see this, it's small print, but there's a lot of little things that could go wrong to cause like hiccups in the transaction. So we're here to kind of see these things ahead of time before they happen, and you know what, if they do, we're here to get you landed safely and help you maneuver around those, those deals there. So let's talk about pre-approval for a second. I know that a lot of buyers are a little apprehensive about getting pre-approved ahead of time. You really, really wanna make sure that you've got a pre-approval in your pocket ready to go. Mainly because our market is moving so fast right now that if you see a house today that you love, I want you to be able to get it. I don't want you to miss out on it because you're like, oh great, now I need to go get pre-approved and another buyer swooped in and got the house before you did. Another reason why you wanna get pre-approved is Let's face it, you know, a $300,000 house is gonna look a little bit prettier than a $200,000 house. So you wanna know what you can get approved for, and that way we're not shopping for something that's way out of your price range. You don't wanna get your heart set on something and then kinda of be heartbroken afterwards. And the last reason too is different loan programs mean that you can buy different houses. So some houses are sold with only cash only, some houses are sold with conventional financing. Some are approved for FHA and B VA. And if that sounds foreign to you right now, I'll be tapping into that a little bit later here. So let's tap on, let's talk about property taxes for a minute. So your property taxes can affect your payment substantially. 
So we've got homestead versus non-homestead. So in Michigan, when you live in your primary residence and you can only have one, you get a nice tax break. Generally speaking, it's about a 30% tax break on your property taxes. So if you're looking at a property that happens to currently be a foreclosure or maybe it was a rental property before where those taxes are non-homesteaded, your tax rate is gonna go down quite a bit from what you see. So sometimes you're gonna see some really high taxes listed on that listing ticket and that's not what you're gonna end up paying. So if you see anything that you're questioning, just give us a call, we'll be able to walk you through it and, and explain what those taxes really are for you. So the other tax item that I wanna talk about is called the pop-up tax. So in Michigan, you know, as our properties appreciate, well, taxes do as well. So thankfully, our taxes get capped so that they're not skyrocketing to a point you know, where they're unaffordable. So if somebody's lived in their property for a long time, they're capped really low. And when they move out of their property, that cap comes off and those taxes hike up quite a bit. So I don't want you to be surprised a year down the road after you buy your house and go, oh my God, Stephanie, what, what's going on with these taxes? Why did my payment just increase? We're gonna be able to tell you that before you even close on the property. What your payment is gonna be now and then what it's gonna be down the road based on that tax situation. So this talks about what type of houses are there that we're gonna look at. So first is a privately owned home. This is just a simple house that somebody lives in right now. We like privately owned homes because if people are living in them, they're functioning houses, meaning the furnace is working, the plumbing is intact, the electricity is working. It's a functioning house, so typically it's in better condition. Also, it's a lot easier to deal with people than a bank or an entity. The other type of houses we're gonna deal with are bank-owned houses. So you're gonna see a couple different terms. You're gonna see bank-owned, foreclosure, REO, it's all the same thing. HUD home, it's all the same thing. It's a foreclosed property. So there's nothing wrong with them. They're pretty easy to go after, pretty easy to negotiate with the banks. Um, generally speaking though, if you go after a foreclosed property, it's gonna take a little bit more work than say a privately owned house. You know, if somebody's losing their house to foreclosure, they're not spending any extra money fixing it up for the next person. Um, the next type of house out there is a for sale by owner. All homes are fair game. So you may come across a for sale by owner that's caught your eye, no big deal. Take your agent through there, take myself through there, we'll go ahead and negotiate with that homeowner for you. And then lastly is new construction. We've got a boatload of new construction popping up all over, so that's certainly an option for you as well to get something that's never been lived in before. <clears throat> so we're gonna talk about how to package your offer. This is great, and this is one of the reasons that you want to have a realtor who like has your back and knows what they're doing. Again, we're in a very fast-paced market right now, and what you're going to find is that it's still a little bit of a seller's market, so the buyers are still kind of competing at times for properties. It's common to find a house that you like, and then there's four other buyers that like it just as much as you. So we know how to make your offer stand out amongst the rest of them. And the way that we do that is a couple different bullet points here. So one is we're gonna check to see if there's multiple offers on the property. If there's multiple offers on it, you've gotta be a lot more serious when you go in with your offer. You get like one time shot there. If there's no other offers on the property, then we can play around a little bit and try to get you a better deal. So the type of financing, this is huge. One, cash is king. So if you're a cash buyer, you're gonna have a much better chance of winning that offer. Conventional financing is next in line. And then we've got FHA and VA. So your financing type will help dictate, you know, which offers get accepted. Um, third would be the purchase price. So yes, price does matter, but it's not always price. As you can see, there's a lot of other, you know, factors here that go into a homeowner deciding if they're gonna take your offer or not. Uh, earnest money deposit. So when you make an offer on a property, you're gonna put down a deposit check and that's like a good faith check. So it's just showing that you've got some skin in the game. That's what you're putting down on the property. I love to beef up my earnest money deposit because this is one way to really like beef up your offer and make it seem stronger and you're not losing any more money. Your earnest money deposit does not go to the seller. That's your money that's just being held till the closing. 
So if you're putting an offer in on a property or you're competing on a property, make sure to beef up that earnest money deposit and get a nice size one going for you. It'll make your offer look a lot stronger. Uh, and we want to try to eliminate any, any contingencies in the offer, which are going to weaken it. So concessions is when the seller gives the buyer back money to help with closing costs. So if we don't really need those concessions, we don't want to ask for them because it's going to weaken the offer. Same thing like if we throw in a home warranty. If you don't really need the home warranty, don't throw it in there. It's going to weaken your offer. Uh, and then we've got a couple other, you know, tricks in our bag kind of things. So we've, we use some escalation clauses and appraisal contingencies. These are things that are really going to make your offer stand out against others that are out there. So we talk about home inspections here and not to confuse you, but there's three different types of inspections we're going to be talking about. So the first is a private home inspection. In my opinion, this is your most important inspection out there. So a private home inspection is a third party inspector that's going to come in and inspect the entire property for you from head to toe. They're a third party person. They're getting paid for the inspection no matter what. So they really don't care if you buy the property or not. So they're giving you like 100% honest information about that property and it's extremely thorough. So you want to have a private home inspection. The other inspections that you might come across would be an FHA or VA inspection. So if you're going to use FHA or VA financing, they want to actually protect you as the buyer and make sure that you're purchasing a good property. So when they do the appraisal on it, that appraiser is going to be certified to do that FHA or VA inspection as well. But they're not as thorough as your private home inspection. The third type of inspection we'll come across is a city inspection. Only certain cities require this. Uh, I find a lot of times in Wayne County, the majority of the cities do require it. Outside of Wayne County, not as much. So if they do require a city inspection, somebody has to bring that house up to code, whether it's going to be the seller before they sell it, or maybe the buyer takes on the property as is, and they're taking on those inspection requirements. So either one is fine, but somebody's got to take care of them. And again, the city inspection is not quite as thorough as your private home inspection. So make sure you're getting a private home inspection done there. So we're going to pull title on the property. So what the title company does is they're going to make sure that we don't have any liens on the property. They're going to make sure that nobody else is out there trying to claim ownership of it. And also the title company is the one that handles the whole closing for us. So they're going to basically collect all the paperwork. They're going to collect all the money and then they're going to make sure that everything is dispersed accordingly. So they're kind of the gatekeeper there. The next hurdle we have is the appraisal. Appraisals can be very hit or miss nowadays. So I will say that we could send five appraisers into one property and I guarantee you we get five different like home values back. So it's, it's very opinion based, in my opinion. Um, as far as the appraisal goes, so what an appraisal is, is your lender wants to make sure that if they're gonna lend you $300,000 to buy this house, that property better be worth 300 grand. So that's what they want to make sure of. They just want to make sure that it's worth however much they're lending. So next we have the underwriting process. So I always picture this as we're running around to help you find a house, we make the offer, we get it under contract and have the inspection, and then we're passing that baton off to our loan officer. So the loan officer or the lender is the one that's going to be sending all the paperwork into the underwriters. Now, initially, your lender is going to ask you for a stack of paperwork, cookie cutter items. They're going to send those into the underwriters. And then the underwriter's job is to scrutinize all of that paperwork, pick it apart, and then come back and ask for more, basically. So it's your job to get all that paperwork back to your lender as fast as possible. Because at this point, we're on a time clock. Every single day counts. So we need to actually make sure that we close in time. So your job is just to get all that paperwork back to the lender as soon as possible. So this talks about closing time frames. So again, cash is king. Cash, you could close a cash deal in just a couple days with no problem. Next in line would be conventional. So conventional loans uh, generally close in about 30 to 45 days. 
Um, I'm going to say conventional is probably the strongest type of loan that you could go after. One, it takes a stronger buyer to get approved for it. They close faster. We don't have inspections that are required. So conventional loan is definitely the way to go. And just to kind of tap on down payments for a second with that, you no longer need 20% or even 10% down for a conventional loan. There's conventional loans out there that are like 3% down, 5% down, 10%, 20%, all in between. So there's so many options right now to get into a really good loan program. Talk to your lender, they'll be able to go over everything that's available for you. Uh, we have government loans, and this would be like the FHA or VA loans. So those take just a little bit longer to close, maybe 40 to 60 days. Uh, if you can't get approved for conventional, this would be your next best option. Uh, FHA and VA loans are very good. However, if you're in a competing situation and you've got the exact same offer, your conventional offer is gonna get approved for accepted by a seller before your FHA or VA offer would. So again, just a little bit longer for closing times on those government loans there. So this talks about how we get paid. I always wanna go over the money portion of it. So what I love is in Michigan, for you being the buyer, you get free representation. It doesn't cost you, you don't pay commission. So why would you not have somebody that's like supporting you, who has your back, who knows what they're doing through this? Get a realtor, have somebody that's, that has your back. So in Michigan, the seller pays all the commission. So sorry sellers, you kind of get stuck with it. So the seller pays their commission. We generally get about 3%, that's what the norm is, but again, you don't have to pay that. And then we go to the closing table. So the closing is the fun part. Um, we're gonna go to the closing table. The title company is gonna be there. They're gonna go through all the documents and explain everything to you so that you understand it. We'll sign the paperwork, you'll be good, and you'll be a homeowner. Uh, and just to kind of let you know what we do after the closing too. So one, we provide lunch for moving day. So let us know what day you're moving, how many people are gonna be there, at what time you want lunch provided, and we'll send it over to you. Uh, and we also host a housewarming party for you. So about a month after you settle into your new house, we're gonna come over, you give us the guest list, we'll handle everything for you. So it's a good time. So I hope this was helpful. Please shoot out any questions that you have or anything that you'd like to learn about. We're gonna go more in depth at a later date with this information. So thank you again, have a good night.